Hi, good evening. Right, so we are here again. I'm going to do a quick run through because some of you were not here at the last session. So I'm just going to try and give you a quick um, rundown as to where we are. Uh, I'm going to ask that while I do this, that two of you um, make up your minds to be volunteers. I want a child who is self-directed and I want a parent who wants to um, have a disciplinary session with that child. So I'm going to ask for two volunteers, please. Um, <laughs> one child, um, one of you who want to regress you know, to your childhood is and to um, play the role of a self-directed child. I think that we would have a lot of volunteers for that. Um, what we want also now is a parent, somebody who wants to take on the challenge of um, having a, a discourse with that child. I see hands going up already. Great. No? <laughs> okay. Um, I thought that somebody was volunteering. I saw the chat box um, flickering. Okay, but so, yeah, not so quickly. Um, unless Rowan was um, offering to be one of the um, participants in that. So let's just run through. Basically, what we're looking at is that these are different times. The, I don't think any parent um, would have experienced what we're going through now. Nobody. Uh, we're, we have so much time with the children and so many um, conflicting things many challenges right now. So these are different times. And, and so what we want to look at is how do we um, go through the parenting process in these challenging times. But the, the, the information that we are transferring um, applies at all times, right? So it's not just for COVID. So let us look at it. We have different styles and so on. So I want to look at here um, are four different approaches. What we're working with is a framework. We're giving you a framework that you can use to manage children. I'm going to add, by the way, Rohan mentioned the thing only in context of parenting. But if you are in, in church, you're going to have younger, younger um, individuals who you might need to guide. Your neighbor might, become, might you know, have children that you want to interact with. So I want you to join the process, not only as a parent or grandparent, but as an aunt, as a neighbor, as a counselor, as someone who just um, has a friend, who has a child who you want to um, influence. This information is extremely useful for us as we try to build a nation, build a community where people are sensitive to the needs of others. So, what we want to look at here then, um, I'm seeing the chat. Okay, just people saying hello. All right, no problem. <laughs> the approach, the framework that we're using speaks to four different behavioral styles. Uh, and we are saying, no, be careful. We're not saying that there are four types of children. That's simplistic. What we are saying, if you look at how the children behave, the behavioral preferences, you can classify those preferences into four groups. And even within those groups, there are nuances, right? So this, this exercise is not for you to get another label to go and paste on the child. So what we have are these four um, approaches, four preferences, four tendencies, if you will, and what we need to understand is that the child will use all four. They might have one that they really prefer significantly over others. Some children also have a preference for two almost equally. Some have three. Um, usually though, you know, have someone who is actually using all four equally. So when we are looking at it, Please bear in mind that the objective here is to look at the behaviors and to try to identify the behaviors and to learn what strategies work best when those behaviors are being manifested. Let me say that again. 
the goal here is not to give you a label to say this child is D style or I style or S style. The objective here is for you to identify when D style behavior or I style behavior is being manifested and to learn how best to respond when that particular behavioral style is being manifested. The reason why I'm mentioning this, for example, is that it, it, it can be complex. You could have, for example, a child who is heavily self-directed, very, very focused, decisive, wants to run things, demanding, driven. But at the same time, that child might be very caring, very supportive, very selfless. So we need to understand then that the objective here is to identify the behaviors, identify the tendencies, and to respond to those tendencies appropriately. Are there any questions? It's another chat, I have another blink um, in the chat box. I'm not sure. Okay. All right. Okay. So, for a little bit, if we could lay off the chat box a little bit, let me oh, see if I can get myself back up. Oh. All right. So, let us look at the four tendencies, four styles. All right. So, the first one we are looking at is um, a self directed child, a child who sort of in Jamaica, we would say they have their own way. Yes, this, that's, that's, that's what we're looking at here. So that behavior is um, decisive. They tend to be demanding, they are active, very active, knows exactly what it is that they want and tends to want to match to their own um, drum beat. So that's one part of the framework. Yes, another um, approach, another tendency is to be instinct, instinctive. This is a child that may not sit steady for um, very long periods, very innovative, wants to be involved with everything, wants to connect with people, right? So that's another style. Um, that's, we call it that the I style. We're going to deal with that more heavily today because we actually dealt with uh, the self-directed child. We need to just finish up something there. Then there is a more sort of sociable, stable, steady, supportive, selfless approach. Right? This is the caring child, um, teacher's pet. Right? So that's, that's the S style. And then the C style is more compliance wanting, very curious, cautious, deep thinking, careful child. So those are the four approaches that we want to look at. Right? So we want to run through the self-directed because we dealt with that uh, last session that we had, unless there are any questions. But Andre, you want to jump in here or we can just re, um, bring to the date? Um, no, doing well, we can go straight to the... Right. Let me just recap quickly then. All right, so basically, as I've been saying here, the all, all children will use all the styles at some point in time, but there might be a preference for one or two, sometimes even three. Right? So the focus is identifying the behavior and responding um, appropriately when it manifests itself. So what about the D style mindset? What drives that kind of behavior? that kind of approach, that tendency. Um, basically, the, the, what's going on in the back of the mind is that I, I want to, <laughs> I want to, it sounds bad when you say I want to have my own way, but I want to determine, I want to have a say in what it is that I do and when I do it and how I do it. Yeah? And so even from an early age, the child basically has a sense of how they want to navigate through life, right? Um, and so there is usually some kind of a conflict because they really don't want to be bossed. And you might not call it as bossing around because you are the parent and so you come and say, do as I you know, say, come now, 
etc. But that to them is running counter to what it is that they want to do at that point in time. And so that's one of the challenges that we have to look at is that if you think about them in terms of adult, um, adulthood, it is that kind of idea that I'm, 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 I'm deciding what it is that I want to do and I will do what I want to do when I want to do it. So you can start to see that there might be some um, conflict if what they determine is, should be done at this particular time runs counter to what the parents want to do. So that's one of the things. So <clears throat> again, some of the un underlying things would be they might be a little bit more risk-taking, more daring. Um, they are demanding, once said no. Uh, as we mentioned, they make up their mi own minds. Uh, they also would be persistent because this is what I want to do. And um, you're no, uh, what does that really mean? Should I just, you know, turn around and say, okay, fine, you have said no, or should I come back and ask again and ask again and ask again? Tend to be pretty occupied. And we mentioned, you know, the persistent also goes along with the defiance. All right. Um, things that frustrate children when they are in this mode is the idea of waiting. So I've asked for some water. Um, you know, <laughs> And kind of need it now, that's why I asked for it. Uh, yeah, I can't really wait until you finish mopping out the room or when you finish cooking or whatever it is because I'm kind of dying of thirst here. So yeah, so there's that impatience. Um, they don't like to be bored. And so lack of activity. Yeah, this one sounds strange, like obeying instructions. But if you think about it from the philosophy of, I am determining what I want to do and your instructions run counter to that. So um, it, there, there's not a meshing of the two. So they're not really aligned. Um, so therefore there is a, some kind of a resistance to that. All right. And similarly with your regime. All right. <clears throat> so some of the tendencies is that they might actually shift quickly um, among activities impatience we talked about with, yeah they don't want to just sit in a quiet corner and read a book sometimes yes they will read but sometimes they also want to do other things they will push to the limit you know test to see um, uh, whether what you're saying will hold or not so there's a testing of wills and they are curious adventurous so they will actually do things that you would prefer um, that they didn't do because um, yeah, climbing on that chair at your age uh, with your skills could end with a large um, wealth on your forehead. So please don't climb. But little boys do need to climb. So that's, that's some of the challenges that we want to talk about as well. All right, so let's move quickly. Um, <clears throat> things that motivate them, they want to win. They want, you know, they want to be in charge. They want to win, they want to succeed. So they also want to be challenged. So they get bored fairly easily. Um, they want to lead. So that's part of it. In, in this role, um, I will pick the team. I will tell you how, 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 how the game is going to run at this point in time. All right. <clears throat> want variety, novelty, and we mentioned challenges is similar to competition. All right. So he's to success. What is it that a child who has this preference and relies on this approach you know, to a great de degree, how do you um, get them to be successful? We're gonna talk more about that um, in a little while. Uh, <clears throat> so one of them, one thing would be, is that if we could get them to learn to pause, just stop for a moment, the idea comes, yes, I'm gonna do this, reflect. Just, just think it through for a minute. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is that limb really strong enough to hold me up? Yeah. Nowadays we don't see Tarzan anymore, but yeah. Just, just think about it. Can that limb hold my weight? Just, just think through a little bit. If you could just get them to get to a place where they can just stop a little bit. When the instinct comes, stop think it through a little bit. Also, patience. Life 
uh, is not going to respond instantly to all of their needs as they go forward. So one of the things that they have to learn is to wait. Yeah. They have to learn that instant gratification is not the answer. Right? They also need to learn to respect the needs of others and for others. Yes, we want to lead. Yes, we want to win. But at the same time, we're part of a community. Um, others have needs. Others have desires. Let's teach them to respect, respect that. Listen. <laughs> I don't know if Brother Andre would tell you what is his experience, etc. But the, the more work that I do, what people come to me and talk about, is that they don't listen. The person will, and I'm talking adults now, by the way, not at the children level. Um, you know, wife, the husband don't listen. Don't listen, 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 listen. Listening is a, it should be a, a, a master's program because believe me, that is where so much conflict comes from because people are not attentive to what's happening. And I'm not talking about hearing, I'm talking about listening, which is a different ball game. All right? <clears throat> and yeah, encourage them. Let them always go for the challenge, be competitive. So we're not, we don't want to kill that spirit. All right? You just want to tame it, bridle it a little bit. All right, let's move forward here. So how do you promote excellence um, when the child is in this mood? Give them the competition. Yeah, set up games, set up whatever it is, everything, structure everything as, 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 a, as a, um, a competition. I know that a family um, organize themselves to see who can, you know, eat their breakfast fast enough, clean their teeth and be ready um, first in the car. Yeah, what does that do? Get them out of the house instead of being, you know, behind them saying, come out that thing. Yeah, set up a little game, they compete, right, they achieve your objective. Those are some of the things that we can do um, to use that spirit um, wanting to win. Paint the big picture, even as a young child, let them understand what's going on. Even just give them instructions, explain why this needs to happen, give them context for things. Because this philosophy, this mindset, this approach actually wants to transform that. These are the kinds of persons who are going to make huge decisions. Maybe, be, you know, some of this disruptive thing that we're talking about now. That's where that is coming from. But unless they understand the bigger picture, they're not able to make those kinds of um, uh, decisions. So <clears throat> paint a big picture, let them understand what's happening. Right, sell them okay um, on shared goals as well, so that they 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 they, they keep their focus. So we want to talk about the grades, and the grades could be linked to trips or wherever. So that again, we're discussing how um, these goals impact other areas of our lives. All right, and definitely expect some pushback expect some resistance because they're not just going to be led by the nose. And um, my suggestion, we're going to talk about the discipline in a minute. My suggestion is do not just do as I say, go and do it now and impose your um, will and your power over them. Because after a while, what you're training them to do is that might is right. And that once they get to the point now where they are, they have the might, then they basically um, are, are not going to be listening to anything. That could also develop bullies and so on. That once I have the upper hand, then I can actually um, dictate what is happening. So you really do want to allow for the pushback, discuss things, why, and then explain why is it that it has to happen in this way or that way. That way, um, we develop a sort of better spirit, a better understanding. Um, that is the kind of individual that you would want when they are CEO or wherever it is, um, higher up the chain, they are willing to listen. They're not willing to just put down people because they have the power, all right? As much as it's humanly possible, give alternatives, give alternatives, give them the chance to decide whether they want to do this now or so on. Yeah as much as is possible, all right? However, you, can't, you have to draw the line in the sand as well. Having discussed all the things, having opened you know, the discussion in a nice way, 
um, and having examined all the parameters and you have decided now that this is what is, then that is what is. That is what is. Otherwise, believe me, this fence is going to get pushed into the sea. All right? So you definitely want to draw your line in the sand. All right, so how do we go about promoting excellence? I hope that we have our two um, volunteers ready. <laughs> Avoid the micromanagement, right? So don't control everything, really. Try not to sweat, you know, the small stuff. Matter of fact, my suggestion is that it would be good if you would treat them in the way that you would treat a smart adult, yes? Speak to them, you know, discuss the options and, and see what is happening. But really and truly, don't pick around every little thing. Sometimes you really, um, there's a philosophy of management that says you must catch the people doing, doing good. So remember, sometimes persons actually do bad things in order to get attention. So if you change the approach where you actually see them doing what it is that is right and you praise um, every time you see them doing right, that's likely to have that behavior be um, replicated. But if the only time you talk to your child is to say, yes, yeah, yeah, okay, um, yeah. don't be surprised if those behaviors keep repeating themselves. So my suggestion is catch them doing the right thing and celebrate and thank you. I'm glad that to see that you're doing your homework. All right, and allow some scope for them to use their initiative. Okay, yeah, so you want, the, you know, the backyard to be tidied up. Um, please, don't, don't stand up over them and say, do this first, do that. Just leave them, give them a chance to get it done. Yeah, and yeah, okay, fine. <laughs> you might um, do some stuff that's, that's all right and mess up, but it's all right, that's how they learn. So if you kill that opportunity for them to make mistakes, I'm not sure that you're developing a wholesome child. So allow for the experiments and don't explore too much. Yeah. Okay, so they might drop your vase trying to help to tidy the house. That's all right. I know it's expensive when you got it from grandma or whoever. Now it goes on like that. You have made mistakes. Let us see how we can um, allow for things like that to happen without it being a mega crisis. Um, yeah, this is the same, similar to initiative is out of the box thinking. You might not have thought about it this way. That's the way that your, all generations of your family have done it in the past and they want to do something different. That's fine as well. Incentives help. Remember, winning, success, etc. All right. <clears throat> so <clears throat> um, this is just a little uh, preview. This is where we are now. Going forward, we have one volunteer I see <laughs> for um, hold on. Let me see how I get this race hunting going on again now. Go ahead, Tammy, please. I just had a question on the previous slide when you were talking about creating a competitive environment for um, a, a child that's, um, that's what is it, D style? I wanted to have an, I don't know if you could explain what that looks like. Is it, what, who, where's that competition and who is it with or what does that look like? Is it with our, how do you yeah. cultivate that kind of environment? Okay, well, I, I, let's just say that there are two. Um, I'm, I, I gave an example. One of them is that let's just say you have two children. Um, children in these rough times, not now of COVID, I'm talking all the time now. Young children have to get up at times when really and truly they want another hour of sleep or half an hour of sleep. So, you know, so they are up um, and there's a hustle. Um, they sit on over the breakfast, it's forever. Um, so one, one approach is to say, okay, fine. Let's see who um, can get everything ready and be seated in the car with their bag and everything um, first. And so that's a competition. So we see what happens and everybody will run and see who can get into the bathroom first, who can brush the teeth first, etc. That's a, that's a simple competition. And you know, if you want, you can incentivize it to say, well, okay, fine. Um, whoever gets the most um, wins for the week gets something, whatever. 
that's 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 one competition. That's a that's a simple um, competition. If the child is an only child, um, then we could see um, how let us say how quickly they do something. You could, you could time it. You say, oh, wow, you beat your own. So that they're, they're competing against themselves. Then, so you know, last week um, it took you so long to do this. Now you are down to that. Let us see if we can get it down to even an, an, another. Um, we can take off another minute. Another. So there's a competition there. Yeah. Does that help? Okay, thank you. Yes, no, does it help? Yes, I, I think my question, yes, it does help. I was just concerned because I think sometimes in that environment with the sibling, if you have a sibling that, um, if you have one that's always winning the competitions is really what I'm thinking is the effect also on the other one. So I'm wondering how to make the D thrive, but not at the expense of another sibling. Okay. It's not as competitive and may not necessarily be winning those competitions. Right. That's, 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 that's an excellent point. Um, so maybe uh, it's not competing against each other, but then you go to this other kind of competition to, to see how they have progressed. So you comp they're competing against themselves. It's like, you know, playing your video games and you're looking for a higher score for yourself. Basically, that's what it is. So it doesn't, we don't have to then match it with what the other person is doing. So that's a, that's a brilliant question. I, I understand what you're saying. Yep. Hope that helps. Yes, thank you. It does. Right. Embarrassment? Sure. Um, one of the things in terms of, um, and, 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 and it's a beautiful question actually because yep. Sometimes it can create what is called sibling rivalry, um, especially, um, you know, one child feel like they're competing against the other. Uh, but notwithstanding, though, you can, you can find healthy competitions that also, and, I, and I, I, I'm not, I don't have an example of one right now, but I'm saying you can have healthy competitions because what that also does is help the other child, um, you know, um, who is probably lagging behind or something to that effect to recognize that, hey, I need to step up my game also in terms of achieving some of these things. But it's a healthy competition, if you understand what I'm saying, because um, especially as it relates to doing the right thing or being obedient or whatever. Um, so, so children must understand. Um, sometimes they say the children can make their own rules, if you understand what I'm saying. So even if they fail, then, 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 then the consequences that follow is based upon the rules that they've agreed upon as far as engagement in this competition is concerned. Just, just, just to add that. No, brilliant, brilliant, yeah. Um, yeah, so as you say, and I, I'm, I've known of situations as well, just like that, where um, not even within the sibling arrangement, but being in a competitive environment, um, if with, given the right motivation, then extraordinary achievements come out of that same, same child um, because uh, there is an encouragement that, yeah, you can do it. Um, and we're not, one of the keys, I think, with, with that sibling rivalry is when um, not winning is seen as, 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 as disastrous. It's, you know, um, you're not as good as you are, whatever. If, if you're lavishing the same, love and sharing and um but as a matter of fact learning to lose is a, is a great skill as well because some people can't manage that so i'm not <laughs> encouraging now that you are always the runner up and that you that is something that you want to do but don't make such a big thing out of the fact that um this person came second All right okay Moving the ship ahead. Um, disciplining children in the digital world. And this definitely, we need to play, I want to have a little role play here. One, one approach really is, is to, um, if the child is acting up, you know, um, in, a, in, a, in a highly emotional state, 
um, one one issue that we have is that um, the, the 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 science is saying that that really and truly uh, when the, that cortisol is going up and so on that's not a good time to actually um, go about the discipline because when you get upset and you are ranting and that child is ranting the rationality goes out um, and nobody's making sensible decisions at that point in time so another approach is to calmly move the child to a different location one one advice is that the changing of the state also has a change of the mind so um <laughs> I had a little seat for um, one of my granddaughters where when they were in that, they said, come and sit down. Just on the step, just come and sit down beside me. Um, and basically that shift. And after a while, that reasoning sight um, is a calming force in itself, in the sense that you are saying, okay, fine. Um, once we're going there, we know there's not going to be any force, the crying is going to stop for a while and we're going to discuss it because we understand, we agree that we're going to talk a little bit and then of course you can go back and cry afterwards but just for a moment we want you to stop the crying, just be calm and then believe me you have the right to go back and cry as long as, as, as loud as you want but just for this moment, just come let us sit down a little bit and just find out what is it that is the problem. Um, and if I can't solve the problem, then of course you can go back and you do your crime. But that actually changes state, changes the mind, calms down the situation, right? Um, however, <laughs> the, the situation, the person can be pretty spirited, um, understand that. Again, we're not using brute force or the fact that we are in charge. Um, I, I put this here because one of the challenges that I think that parents um, have, when, especially when they're dealing with children who are self-directed, as we say in Jamaica, own way, et cetera, is um, unfortunately, uh, violence is used in terms of you know, beating it out of them and so on. Uh, <clears throat> uh, professor Gill talks about, um, I don't know if he's a professor, but his research that talks about a lot of it. Um, persons who are um, incarcerated for problems uh, speak about childhood where the parent will abuse them basically we talk about Jamaica um, we have seen situations where people taking machete to beat the children what we are saying here is be careful that in our discipline of a child who has a tendency to, to be self-directed and we don't kill that spirit you know, extinguish that fire <laughs> because we don't want, you know, a, a sort of lamb going forward in life where they're not, you know, we have so um, subdued them that they really are not charting their own course going forward. Brother Andre, <laughs> jump in here. Still looking for two volunteers, but that's one, one approach to the discipline that I would suggest that we look at seriously. All right. <clears throat> um, the, also, the, but, yeah, go ahead. The, the, the mouse and, and lion. <laughs> that way, I love it. It's, it. it's just that there are, um, there are cases, though, that we have um, where, where, where the two D styles are, are so the so the D style in the father or the D style in the mother is 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 um, um, forcing down you know their, their their rules their autocratic style of parenting and so that diminishes or tries to so to force the, the the fire in the child to to extinguish that fire in the child um, um, pretty much but but the truth be told what they don't understand sometimes, and I'm like you, I'd like how you use the word bully, because the truth be told, um, some of these children develop what is called ADHD, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. Now that is measured where? Not into the home, but 90% of the times um, it is manifested, I should state rather, um, in schools. So the truth is, sometimes the lion does come out. <laughs> 
okay. school environment and, 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 and because they are forced to suppress the lion at home or behave like a mouse. So, go ahead. Brilliant. Thanks. All right. Okay. All right. Um, so, yeah, one, on that same, so similar note, you know, following up on that, is that sometimes if we understand the mindset, that is one of the reasons why we're looking at this thing in this way, trying to get to understand the mindset behind the behaviors. Um, it's, it's challenging for parents, especially parents who come through a certain kind of parenting, to distinguish between um, a child who is uh, trying to defend where they are, what it is that they, they how they see life, and, and, and talk back. Don't talk back to me. You know, you understand what I'm saying? It's not a lack of respect. It's, it's not even insubordination. It's, um, it's, it's, a, it's an attempt to have you understand where I'm coming from. Now, one of the characteristics of the use of, 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 of this style behavior is the tendency to be a little bit more animated, um, might raise the voice, you know, speak a little louder than normal, um, because there is a, an urgency, there is a, a, a need for you to understand where I am. Let me, let me, let me use an example from the workplace to, to give you what I'm talking about. All right, so let us say Andre is my boss, okay, which is, you know, obvious. So, so Andre is, is speaking to me about an issue. Right? I'm subordinate. I respect him so much. I can't afford for him to have this opinion of me. So I am going to defend it to, to death. I have to get Andre to understand that. No, you have the wrong opinion of me. No, I did not do that. Or no, you understand what I'm saying? And so I'm going to get more and more animated. If Andre, you know, was, you know, I didn't have a respect for him, I would just say, oh, come on, it's all right. Think what you want to think. So what you want to say. It doesn't matter. And I will just move on. I will ignore him. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's interesting in that the more respect that I have for him is, is the more likely that the discussion could get what people would say, oh, boy, that sounds like disrespect and so on. It's just, it's just a natural desire to communicate. And as I communicate and I want to get my message across, I'm going to be more emphatic and I'm going to ensure. And it might come across as, who are you talking to like that? Hey, what is this? You turn man inside you. No, it's not that. I just want, mommy, I just want to know. So that's, that's what I'm saying to you. Um, but of course the parent has to make sure that it doesn't go off the track. I, I, I hope that this piece is um, being understood in the way that I want it to be understood. I'm not saying let the child, you know, some of the children that you see in supermarkets that just kind of completely off the rails. But I'm begging you, please try to understand uh, where I'm coming from in that allow some amount of feedback and the feedback could get more animated, more energetic than you are used to. Um, don't, don't allow disrespect, but don't kill that spirit, please, because all it is is a desire to get the message across. All right, go brother Andre. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, so to so take care, you know, when you lose control, remember you have to have the line in the sand, and also make sure that at every point in time, remember you are still in charge, make sure that expectations are clear and the consequences are clear. So everybody knows what it is. These are the param parameters within which we're operating. This happens when this ha doesn't happen or vice versa. All right. Okay, so are we gonna get the two volunteers? I hope that fellow has a long lip and is not sticking his tongue out. Um, anybody? Seriously, it's just a, a quick game, a little fun. 
Could we have two volunteers? Could we have one? Let's start with one. Is there someone who would like to play mother, father? You don't have to be a parent. Can I look at the list and see? Anybody? No? You would learn so much from this exercise. Oh, Tammy, thank you. I see a hand up. Let's go. Your parent, Tammy. Okay. All right. You are my mother. Okay, let's go. Let's see if we can get someone else. If not, I'll, I'll be the brat. Sorry. Um, could we have a child? All right, I'll be the child. Okay. Let's come up with a scenario. You want to come up with a scenario, Tammy? I give advantage. Uh, as, as, uh, an example of our um, misbehavior? Or as yes, yes, what are you disciplining me about? You have called me? Wow. You have called me, yeah. So what is the scenario? Anybody else who didn't put up their hand want to come up with a scenario? <clears throat> um, you told me, okay, somebody coming in with somebody wants to share. Oh, Charmaine, you volunteering to be, oh, sure, sure. Which one? Tell me the chance. Just, just, just volunteering the scenario, not, not, not sharing. What is the scenario? All right, I'm thinking, no, no, we have COVID and we realize that um, persons or well, children have to be doing online classes, right? So okay. it's a situation where the child um, knows that he or she, let's say the, 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 the teacher give him or her a break, uh, maybe a 20 minute, 15 minutes break, for example, to have, a, have lunch, right? Mm -hmm. And the child exceeds 15 minutes by going on the computer to play games, Right. Okay. And, and I and I caught the child doing that because now it's time for the child to resume class. Okay. All and, right. right. And I'm explaining to the child, listen, it is important okay. that you finish your classwork before you have right. to get it. Don't don't play with the whole thing. I get it. Okay. All right. Fine. So I, I'm. All right. So we're going now, Mr. Smith. Find the person now. Bye. <laughs> no, all right. So, all right. So tell me, that's it. Um, I have. Um, overstayed my um, time. I'm not done my class time when whatever. Okay. You have not. Okay, so you haven't yeah, done your class. Suppose I, I I should have joined, rejoined the class, and but I you know um in, gone on to some other things, and I have not gone back into my class. Oh. Apparently, it's not the first time, and and so on. All right. So okay. That's all right. Yes. Let's go. All right, you want to come on screen or not? You don't have to, I'm not going to push, push the button. Push, no, push. I'll use audio for today. That's good. All right. Okay. All right. So, Trevor. Um, okay. So, you, so class started five minutes ago. Why are you not on class? Why haven't you logged on to the class? <laughs> Mommy. <laughs> Mommy, it's just, it's just a waste. I got covered that a long time ago, Mommy. It's a waste of my time. We talk right. about the teachers going, it's just a waste of time. It's just, oh, man. You know, I was really busy here trying to do something. It's just a waste of time, man. It's just. Right, but there's an, we have an agreement. This is class time now. And then after class, you know that you usually get a break once you finish all of your homework. So why we don't, Let's stick to what the agreement is. Get the class, get the um, Mommy, class activities out of the way. Mommy, I was doing that. You know, that. Mommy, I was doing that, Mommy, but, but it's just a waste of time. So that's why I decided to just come and just do my homework because the time I'm spending there, we just have some idlers in the class. So it's just, and we just don't have any control over the room. It's, 
it's really a waste of time. And, you know, I, I thought you would encourage me to just go on and get, you know, make, make the best use of time. You have always said that. Make the best use of time because time is fleeting. You know, all of those things. So I remember those things. And that's why I, you know, I'm trying to do that. I'm trying to follow your rules. Your that's, that's true that we, would, we talk about using our time. We also talk about keeping to our agreements. And we know that even if there are idlers in the class, we can't let that pull us back or let that get us distracted from what we need to do. So if there are idlers in the class that are stopping you from doing your work, you know that we also talk about speaking to the teacher. Well, that's what, what I was going to ask you. Can you talk to the teacher, please? Because I don't want to waste the time. This is a very familiar conversation. <laughs> Or I can speak to the teacher, but that doesn't affect what we're talking about. No, right, your job we, is to make sure that you turn up for class on time. Any can other challenges that we agreements? have, we can deal with that at another time. Can we have some new agreements, mommy? We can have new agreements. We can discuss other agreements after this session. But you can't. We're not going to change our plan in between. Your job is to make sure that you come to class on time and that you set up. If there are challenges at class, if you're, there are challenges with the other students in the class, speak to your teacher. If your teacher is not but listening to you, run and come to mommy or daddy and explain what the problems you're having and we will come and intervene. But what but you can't do is to play games in class. It's not, no, no, mommy, it's not games. Look at what I'm, it's not games, mommy. No, no, no. It's not games. Look, look at what it's not, No, no, it's not games. I don't want you to think that I'll be so careless. It's not games, mommy. Look, look at the work that I'm doing here. And mommy, you have to ask yourself, what happened to Mr. Jones? Why, 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 why am I the first one in the class with Mr. Jones? Because I don't waste the time there. <laughs> All right, don't bother go to class then. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Comments? <laughs> Come on, anybody got any learning or uh, anything not to do to do from that? You are allowed to mic up, please, or type in chat. What was your response to that exercise? So um, yeah, we're going to move on to the next chat. I'm not going to read this one. He's suggesting that mommy must check the history on his browsing. But yes, he can. I'm browsing. I'm you know I'm I'm checking <laughs> internet. Yes, yeah, Sherry, go ahead, please. Did did I hear the parent tell you just now not to go to class? Pardon me. Did I hear the parents tell you just now not to go to any class? I'm never. No, 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 no. She said go to class. I'm not going to waste the time. No one so go to class now. Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right. What? I thought I heard otherwise. Okay. Yeah, it's that serious parent? Is that serious parent? Anybody? Any comments? Uh, what is it? Yes. Go ahead. <laughs> I think. I think. She, I think. Um. I think it's an excellent mom, by the way, and I stick, stuck to our guns and everything like that. Um, she didn't get flustered and frustrated, by the way. Um, she still went on in trying to, to, to maintain some type of negotiating. Um, um, and although the child, you know, kept on pushing, um, you know, and insisting that, that, that it is his way and she need to to, to renegotiate because maybe she's not understanding because she still wants him to observe the rules, um, you know, um, well, the rules that both, that everyone agreed upon first and foremost, and he now wants to change it. And she's saying, I understand, but guess what happened? After, you have, after we have completed this one here, then we can look at, um, you know, making adjustments or, or renegotiating or what have you. But right now, let us, I, I, I thought that was very, very good, by the way, to stick to our guns where that is concerned. Um, the, 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 there, there was, I believe, a uniqueness in the child. I think th this child is very, 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 very bright, if you ask me, um, in that this child says, I'm talking about smart when I use the word bright here, in that um, 
the child, um, when he says, no, 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 look at what I'm doing. I'm not, you think I'm wasting time? I'm not wasting time. I'm not playing games. Look at what I'm doing, you know. This is not playing games. I think, you see, um, that was uh, a unique way, by the way, for the child to bring that in. And, and if every parent is not careful, literally, they may become, they may lessen their stance or look to renegotiate because right, right then and there, they may feel like they lose the battle because the child is going to now prove to them that what he is doing, which is, which is which really in truth and in fact is slightly segueing from the real issue at hand. The real issue at hand is that is the time he must come to class and what he must be doing in class. And he's saying, yes, but if I'm doing something productive, you can't, don't fault me for that. And that is a unique way, I believe, that he could have not only segue to the real issue at hand, but then parents now, um, you know, follow in that direction and lose the real issue that they're supposed to be um, talking about. All right, so you open the door, you know, so I'm going to enter. <clears throat> what if, and that's, that's a real issue, by the way, and that's, that's part of it, I've seen it through adult, you know, working with the offices, working with the, what, that, that usually, um, because, Remember one of the things that we said about this style is that winning, you know, that they want to achieve, want to succeed, whatever it is. So in, there usually is some credibility, some, some discussion, at least in their mind, whether they are right or wrong. Their mind, in their mind, what they are doing is contributing to success. They might be off wrong because, you know, um, none of the styles are better than any other style. You know, you could have, you know, um, incompetent people using the ISRC, or you could have competent people using them. But one, one thing would be is that there is a, a cogent argument. There is a definite thing to say, hey, listen, listen, listen. What you are disciplining me for, you're not so right. You're off track because, and there's usually a good, good reason. The question that I have for you, sir, Andre, is, what if the reason is really compelling? What if really this teacher is wasting my child's time? Should I still force him to go and sit there and waste the time when he could be actually um, improving his grades and, and learning something by himself? It's a question. Is it more important, um, and, and, you know, putting, <laughs> putting it out there, is it more important for him to obey and to agree with the thing than to um, progress and to make a sensible decision that is um, more uh, productive question. Excellent. Um, the thing is, he would have to, if, if his behavior though is being disruptive, one, and, and it is also interfering with the other children, also with the teacher, he, one would have to know to have to teach him to choose his battles. So on one hand, we just invite him to say, okay, I'm going to give you an opportunity for you to excel um, in other areas. If it is the case that you really want to learn so much, because um, why is it that you have to choose this opportune time to do your learning? <laughs> you know, <laughs> when you want to watch something, is it that, why, why should I take away so you can do some role reversals with him? I said, when, you, when, when you're interested in something, is that the time you, you want me to interrupt you and teach you something else when you're supposed to be learning something that you're excited about? And so what you're teaching him is to learn to respect person's time, okay? And so what you don't want to say, well, okay, then um, you can have it your way. Um, because then where do you stop it? And I start, I'm saying, okay, then I want to learn right here. This is what I learn again. Like, and any, any arena that I want to learn, even if I'm disrupting everybody else, you better stop and allow me to learn and do what I want to do. <laughs> then you can check back in when I'm through. Or, or I'll allow the class to go on when I'm through <laughs> doing what I want to do. Okay. All right, sir. I hear you. All right. So, yeah. So I think the, the bottom line, I wanted to ask that question because one of the critical things to understand is that Sometimes academic learning, knowledge, you know, gathering knowledge, uh, um, people might believe that that should trump learning other things, which, for example, learning to be disciplined. So no matter how um, ineffectual the teacher is, 
the agreement we have is that you come on time and attend the class and you know and participate fully in the class that's 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 something to learn um whatever it is that you thought you could learn academically in that period of time feeds it has an ab absolutely no you know no value when compared to learning that you need to honor your commitments honor your agreements that so that, you know that that will be the point all right so shereen go ahead yes shereen yeah. Hi. Hi. can you can you hear me yes yeah yeah i was um going to say something similar to like what also you and what um i think uh, uh is it david that just mentioned something that andre oh sorry andre my thing what i normally tell my son i said you know if you break rule you know, when you go into your workplace and your boss give you a rule, the organization give you a set rule to follow, you need to follow it. If you don't follow it, you lose your job. Now, in terms of um, Tammy's approach, what she just mentioned, I like the way that she stick to her gun and say, okay, go to, you know, you need to go to school. But if the kid is keep on complaining that he's not learning, just, you know, my argument is that if class is from eight to nine, you go from eight to nine. That's a rule and you need to follow that rule. Now, if you feel that you need to exercise your learning capacity and you need to learn more, then either you do it at 9.05 when class is finished or you wake up an hour early and do some more read, some reading or research on your own. But then you have a deadline, you have a time period that needs to be set and follow and you need to follow it. Because if you don't follow, the, the thing is that you need to follow. This is just my belief. A kid need to follow rules set. So when they reach into the workplace, they can also follow that same rule. And if, you know, if he wants to go and play, ask, I mean, learn anything afterward, that's fine. But then respect the teacher's time and the student time within that one time frame. So I don't know if my methodology is right or wrong. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, I, think, I think we are agreeing with what we're saying is that, that, that the, 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 what needs to be learned in that scenario is, 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 is to be obedient, is to, is to honor obligations, honor your agreements. I think that that is a bigger lesson than um, uh, allowing the child to um, decide what to do. But there's another little piece that I just stick it, I, and I was trying to stick that in that nobody mentioned it, but um, <clears throat> the dialogue. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm sure that I couldn't have this kind of dialogue with my, with my, 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 my parents, you know, in terms of um, I, I was interrupting at times. Um, I, you know, was kind of, um, did, you, did you feel a, a, a sense of, stepping back a sense of um or um, am i close to my mother and, and we are right and we can you know she still is going to put um be in control but it's not the old time um you know speak when spoken to or um i don't know did you did you i i tried to to, to present a child that was um communicating with the parent in a way that probably couldn't happen 20 years ago and probably can't happen now in some homes. Anybody have a, um, go ahead, Shereen. Well, here is my scenario. Um, and, you know, growing, growing back, you know, growing up in, in Jamaica and everything, you know, our parents always say speak. It's like when parents are talking, it's like parents are talking, you don't need to talk back. So, you know, you have a generation like that. But at the same time, and I, I realized sometimes I practice it with my, with my son, he be like, but mom, but that, well, it's dad, you're more, I'm more the strict one. But there is a difference I notice. It's like, I, I don't mind allowing the kids to express their selves. However, it's the tone of it that makes a difference. So um, I don't think that, um, the role that you play as a kid, well, maybe I didn't pick it up, that you express, although you were trying to raise your voice, you're expressing yourself. 
but it's the tone and that's what I look at the tone a kid can raise their voice ju just like you were saying um, you know they sometimes they raise their voice just to express what they're saying and if my son raises his voice at me it's like a no-no but then if I, I listen carefully if the tone is off wrong then right. that's where you know I have a problem but then if he's trying to raise his voice just to make his point to me then and the tone is respectful then that's fine and I think it goes by the tone so maybe right all right. Yep. I, I'm finished. I, I think it's just go by the tone. No, man, I agree. 100. Okay. All right. So Tessa says, <laughs> I don't know if she was being <laughs> funny, but she's saying that the, the respect was shown from the parent to the child. <laughs> I don't know if you want to explain that, Tessa. <laughs> I agree with her. <laughs> from the parent to the child, what about the child to the parent? But I don't think the child was condescending. I think the child was, was I, 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 I think that mentioned okay. the child, that's why I was commending the mother for the right. parents and, and having that level of negotiating and, okay. and dialoguing um, with the child. I thought okay. the child was very smart, <laughs> literally by the way, um, but, but yes, I, I, I agree with Tessa fully that respect was shown from parent to child, big time. Okay. All right. Can I get a feedback as Brother Grenell, you wanted to share? Go ahead. Okay. No, I saw you. Not right. No, Brother Smith. No, I saw you. Interesting mind. discussion. Okay. Okay. All right. What about from, parent, from child to parent? Though? Was the child sufficiently um, respectful? I just wanted to hear that. Um, anybody thought the child was disrespectful? Good. All right. Nobody thought so. All right. Um, I just know that that dialogue couldn't take place in many households um, without a slap across the face or something like that. Not that he was rude or any way disrespectful, but it's just, it's just how some um, <clears throat> parents go about their thing. All right. So Charita thinks well that he was not disrespectful. All right. So all right. Um, I'm going to change gear now and move to the next one. <clears throat> I hope you're getting value from this. <clears throat> so we want to look at another orientation, another set of tendencies. Remember again, please don't walk around out to look and this is my neighbor. This is. I'm one of my children at school. This is whoever, my child or my grandchild or my niece and try to just put, put the label. What we're looking at are the behaviors, the tendencies. And what we are saying is that this is another a, a tendency. And um, remember that we could have a child using multiple tendencies. The objective here is to look at when this tendency presents itself, how to identify it first of all, and what is it that we do? Um, how do we respond best to it? Now, <laughs> um, spoiler alert, this tendency um, is the cause for uh, much hair pulling and much um, discussion and woe is me from parents who wonder. At the same time, this, uh, tendency is the source of so much joy, so much um, fun. It's, it's just, this is just entertainment personified. This is just wonderful. I love you so much. I could, yeah. It's, it's, the, it's, it's that kind of stuff. So just warning that this is really sort of a mixed thing that, you know, one minute it is crucified, the next minute is, oh, come, come for your hug. Uh, okay, so what, what is this style about? Um, this child is very interested in things. Um, the parents, you know, and certainly when they get to adulthood, people try to say that they are easily distracted and they don't pay attention, etc. 
And from the, period, from the child's point of view or from even from the adult, if you understand the underpinning is that we like to say that um, in this mode, the individual has sensitive antenna. You know, they have a sensitive antenna so they can pick up what is going on around them. So they are interested in things around them and they kind of wonder why people wouldn't want to be like that. Why would I just walk along the road and don't see this flower, but don't see this, whatever it is, and everybody's just moving along. So yes, Brother G, go ahead. Virgin had a hand up. No? I'm sorry about that. I'm inadvertently raised my hand. No problem. Um, All right. Right. So, yeah. So, there's an active interest in what's going on around. Ah, uh, yes. But let me just finish this one. Mic up, Virgin. Mic up, mic up. Right. So, you want to be connected, etc. So, there's a a, a, a real body of a, a flood, flood of activity they involved with this um, this is the individual that you know um, will have on different devices and doing different things and you kind of wonder how can they ever um, study in this you know I grew up in a situation where you're supposed to study it so it's a turn off all the, the you know things no music nothing it's not a person you know who have on it noise around etc tv yeah. yeah so different folks <laughs> different strokes for different folks so this mindset is is, is kind of marching to a different drum beat definitely um one of the things that we know is the connecting they connect really want to connect with people these are outgoing people oriented really want to um, engage at all times be engaged and to engage and so mm -hmm. communicates more than is usual. Um, maybe we could shorten this by saying talks a lot, <laughs> but um, yeah, that's part of it. But they tend to be upbeat and they rebound quickly. So things don't keep them down for a long time. And somehow or another, they can see the sun um, when everybody else is saying, well, it's rainy and dark and so on. But this brings a, a certain, beauty a certain joy a certain yeah um set of wow, uplifting <laughs> sun rays if you want to call it around you right but because of the what what parents would call lack of focus because they don't sit down still and they can't do anything for any long long period of time that also causes frustration and um that reliability where I said you were to do this and it wasn't done because um, I got involved with other things. Um, one, one, one understanding of this is that um, this mindset is like a juggler in the circus. So we're going up and we're putting up three, four, um, and we're doing well. Well, I wonder if I can do five. Yeah, let me see. Oops, yeah, okay. Six, yeah, okay. But there's a limit. But we're going to try and get to that limit. The problem that this mindset has, how others see them. Is, I love you. Okay, so maybe we have one of those on now. <laughs> can you mute your mic, please? Yeah, so, yeah, what this mindset has, um, the, you know, for, for persons who are looking at them is that you're only looking at the fact that I dropped that one. So you're looking at the ones that I dropped. What about those that I, I, I still have in rotation? And so they are saying, respect the fact that I'm trying to go where nobody has gone. Respect that. Understand that. Yeah. And of course, if I don't do so well with the juggling, I'm going to try and go and be the clown or try and be the magician or i'm going to try as a matter of fact i'm going to try to be all of the areas might not be the lion team or <laughs> that kind of that can be in yours but um i'm interested in all of them 
all of them. Um, so that's a, a, a pretty complex <laughs> um, mindset. I, <clears throat> but beautiful, happy, fun, nice to be around, etc., and highly creative. Okay, so let us look at some of them. Um, okay, I'm looking at time. Man. Really need to have two hour sessions, otherwise, this thing won't go on forever. Um, so maybe at the end, we need to take a little vote to see is it possible for us to go to 830? Is that going to be a um, problem so that we actually look at the two hours because the 90 minutes just run off like that? All right. So here are some other things, and then um, I'm going to open the door for some questions. So interconnected, people, people are central. They want to achieve things with and through people. That's it. People are central. So isolation is not ideal for this behavioral style. They definitely like, so the COVID thing here now could be challenging for um, children who have this thing. They really want to be with their you know, peers running up and down or, or whatever, but we depend on the age, um, connecting, speaking, touching, being there, right? So also want to be involved with things, right? want to join many groups, do many things, etc. because variety literally for them is the spice of life. Tend to be inspirational. They are the ones that will rally the team, let us go and do this, and have the ideas to play this particular game or to do this um, project, etc. So, um, strong motivators. And I'm, 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 I'm suggesting that if you have a family or a group, um, <clears throat> this individual can get, help you to sell your ideas. Yeah. So, let us say that you, know, you have some, some plans and that you are concerned that your family has six minutes. Um, be resistant. Try to see if you can sell it to this person first, and then maybe they might help you to, to, to get the message across. Right? So don't, don't underestimate this, the inspiration and the influential thing. Um, they tend to uh, be so open-minded as to probably be risk, risk being too easily impressed, uh, in, impressed with people. So they might actually see, see things in people that might not be there. So um, be careful, be careful in terms of helping them with identifying the right company. That's, that's a suggestion that I put out there in that they might actually overlook things that shouldn't be overlooked. I don't know who else to say it in a delicate kind of way, but be careful. I would, I would um, want to have, the, have their friends come to your house. I would say that for anything in any the group. But yeah, yeah, bring them over. Let them come by us. I will, you know, we will get the refreshments and so on. You come, bring your friends over. I don't want you to go. Um, that's, that's, that's crazy me. <laughs> um, and yeah, creativity abounds right here. Creativity. So, um, my, oh, still have another, we can do another slide maybe, five minutes. But any questions about this? Do, can we relate to, anybody can relate to um, this behavioral preference, this, this, these traits, this style? Does this look like anybody? Yeah, go ahead. Um, I have found um, uh, I have found that um, to add to what you have stated, or maybe not even an addition, um, that there's a there's a, a carefreeness, a flamboyance. Um, you know, you know, like to as I said, very very expressive. Uh, very excitable, very hasty, um, you know, some of those things. I, I right. think. And, and, um, but, but something very, very um, um, interesting, um, very, very interesting that, you know, um, um, 
um, because it borders on, on what is called a sanguine personality profile, actually. Um, <clears throat> but, but I have found that um, uh, freedom from control and too much details. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if I'm no. excited in something, um, I'm, I, I might spend too much time on the thing that I'm excited on, you know, and to pull me away or to pull away your child from something, then say, you're crazy. You hear, man, you know, they, they become very frantic because how could you, how could you stop this? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> how could you stop this? You know, I'm such a great time. I mean, I mean, how dear? How could you? Are you like really? You, you're going to break my heart, and, and so they become, you know, they, they just carry to, to to like like it's the worst thing you could have done. <laughs> yep. the, party, the party right here now will stop me from enjoying myself right here now. You know, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, um, you know, I I, I want. I want the control to express myself, to, to be me. So if I dress up a particular way, don't complain. Don't, don't tell me I don't match colors. <laughs> yeah. Please, no. Um, no, 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 it's good. Go on, go on. No, but that, that's part of the idea. It's, it's, it's as I say, it's a, 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 a different beat. It's a, it's, it's, and seriously, as, as adults, um, this style, I'm, I'm just telling you straight up, this style is, is discriminated against straight up in terms of a behavioral style. This style in, in corporate things, you can be maybe sales um, and PR, but certain areas, there's a sort of ceiling because they are saying this person is serious enough um, and so on. I've seen it, I've, I, as a matter of fact, I've been in a workshop where um, the CEO actually says that I, when, we, when we did this part, they would never knowingly employ somebody with this behavioral style. And yet still, when we look at the competitiveness index and look at the countries that are at the top of the competitiveness index, this is the style that they're craving. This is the style that is dominant. Uh, you know, when, 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 we, when we look at the, the Scandinavian countries and so on, this is what they're looking for because this is the style that produces, for example, the disruption that we're talking about. If you, if you, if you um, look at this, you know, this is the style that comes up with this. I want to talk, I want to whatever it is, but think about it. Some years ago, you used to have to walk with a watch, you used to have a big old camera hung around your neck, um, look at, you know, calculator, all of that. That comes from persons who are not by any means willing to think like how everybody else thinks. That's, that's, that's the problem. Um, but when you are, out there and you are thinking like that um we need order we need order we need order and that's where the problem is this this person writes more has get more detention write more lines <laughs> because it's, how can i just sit down and have the teacher write things on the board and go on boringly for 45 minutes or 40 minutes or i think it's 30 35 minutes now um, and not make a um, a plane and, and throw it across the room or give a joke. How could I? It's just impossible for me to just sit there and this teacher is go over this thing because they have been doing it now for 10 years, they're teaching the same lesson and they're just droning through it. And I must just sit down and just take it. No, man. I have to talk. I have to play a little book, cricket, or so, you know, I have to entertain myself. And so, what did I just say? What did you just say? <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so, so this is this this is this is the problem. Um, the example I use again is that you know, recess. Um, everybody is supposed to line up because this is a disciplined society. So you have to line up in the hot sun until everybody is dead quiet before you can go into the classroom. But I just say, Andre, fall down, down there and, and don't take the whole of his pants. So I have to come back and tell everybody, so I tell a my story. So everybody, the classmates start to cut eye at me now because I am the one that's keeping him in the sun. But yeah, what am I to do now? I must wait until after school to tell people the story that Andre just not even close. How could I? Yeah, so I wanted to, I'm, I'm, I'm sharing a different perspective on this. So that people don't pull out as 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 many of the hearers as as 
they want to. But at the same time, and we talk about that, is that this needs to be controlled, right? So, um, but the slide that we have, let me just, just run through this quickly and then we can close off. So, yeah, they don't like the controlled environments. They, too much structure. Can not understand why life needs to um, function? Oh, by the way, Andre, you came on. Sorry, share, please. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I was just, I was just dying of laughter. I'm sorry. Right. Yeah. So, so some of the keys is that the control, the too much, too much restrictions, too much structure. You know, four o'clock we're going to do this and ten past four. Oh man, this is driving me crazy. I can't, I can't manage that. Um, and then the isolation. A quick, a quick hint. In terms of punishment, Shh. the biggest punishment that you can do for this kind of child is to ask them to go and sit in a corner um, and just be quiet. No, no punishment. No matter take away. You don't have to take away anything or do anything. Whatever. Just that's, that's it. Um, because basically. What they are thinking, and I said, is that I'm a, am I a mad, mad person? I must have sit here, keep quiet, and stare at the wall. Um, yeah. So the smart ones would actually do something, maybe turn over the chair or do something, and get some other punishment. You might think it's a, it's a, it's a more severe punishment, but nothing can be as severe as this idea if you just sit down and keep yourself quiet. <laughs> so, spark me, yes, you, <laughs> please. I would love you to do that. But please take me off of this chair in this corner. All right, we will finish that up next time we come. But maybe we need to have this kind of a conversation as to really. Um, is 90 minutes um, too much? Uh, can we do the two hours? So that we get to a, 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 a landing place um, <clears throat> sooner rather than later. Can you just put in your chat whether we stick with the 90 minutes or we can go to 8.30? Not today. We have to give warning about it, so I wouldn't just jump on you like that. But I'm finding that is short. So Cherie says that. Alta says 90. Okay. Some more persons. It's going to take a long time for your destination to get to there. 90 minutes, okay. 90, okay. All right. 90, okay. All right. So, that being said, we are at the end of today's. All right. I think the 90s have it. And. It's a Saturday evening and we understand. So we meet again. Let me make sure that I said the right thing. It's first and third, so it's going to be the 18th. Yes. So the 18th of July, and we will continue to look at this very interesting style. Very, very interesting. If we learn to manage this style from childhood, from the persons in the early childhood institutions, from the persons who are minding the babies, where we try to discourage them from being their self, themselves. These are the persons that when we give them the coloring and give them the, the things with the line. I know you want to get the motor, rustle, the, the motor muscles right, but don't want to chastise them because they color outside of the lines. And yes, we know that cows are not purple, but leave it alone. Just don't <laughs> kill that out of them from early. Believe me, these are innovators these are the creators these are the people that are going to come up with the thing do not stifle it out of them as we are doing in most of our early childhood and our you know going up into school prep school teachers just want peace and quiet 
Everybody just form the line. Everybody just come and keep quiet and listen to them. Uh, please, let us see how we can tolerate these persons. See how we can encourage them to be who they are naturally. I don't know. I don't know how to play, but next time I will, I will do that because I see it. I see the stifling of this um, style going right up. And that is why we are third world still because we're not <laughs> encouraging these persons to be innovative, to be themselves. Yeah. So a little preaching is going to take place in terms of this style when we, come, when we meet next time in that I want to encourage us to look at this style and to understand it from another perspective because I see that there is a strong attempt from the other side, which is the more conservative side to, you know, have structure um, dominate innovation, out of the box thinking, etc. We need a balance. And there's absolutely no way that persons who have this um, tendency are getting a fair share. Absolutely not. As a matter of fact, my, in my estimation, they're actually being actively discriminated against. That's it for tonight. Uh, questions? This will be recorded and made available on the church's website. Maybe we can put that in the chat, admin, as to how you can access this. And um, thanks for your time. And Tammy, thank you very much for participating. We are going to need another parent um, when we meet on the 18th. And to be disciplined here and stopping. So, admin, please take over. Thank you very much, Brother Smith. Um, I am sure that we all had a good time with that interaction between you and Tammy, the disciplined child. <laughs> Um, I just want to thank yourself and brother Andre again for the information. I just wanted to reiterate for all our audience, whether you're a member of the church or not, that we will have the recording available online. It will be on the church's website, likely to be uploaded by the end of this week, if not before. Saint, that St. Andrew, churchofchrist.org slash media. That's St. Andrew, Church of Christ dot org slash media or you can send us an email at st andrew info at st andrew church of christ dot org that's info at st andrew church of christ dot org if there is any information that you like on the church um, you can also just send us an um, email or you can send us a whatsapp on our church cell number that's five three two nine eight nine one Five three two nine eight nine one. Thanks you. Thank you everyone for your time for being here this evening. Um, just before we close, I'm going to ask if our evangelist, Brother Al Al Alfonso Grinnell, would just um, do us a closing prayer as we we close tonight, please, Brother Grinnell. Yes, Brother Rowan. <clears throat> Shall we bow, please? <clears throat> our God and Father creator of the universe, the God in whom we move and have our very existence, the God who have allowed us to have this session this day. We thank you, God, for Brother Andre, Alan Casey, and Brother Trevor Smith for facilitating an excellent workshop. Father, we pray that we'd have listened and would have learned and we'd make the necessary application where possible. Father God, we, we pray for all the parents who have listened Father, I pray you just bless them with the courage to take the bold steps that sometimes we lack in terms of guiding our children aright. Father, we pray for wisdom. We pray for strength. May you guide us throughout this night. Lord, may you protect us and bring us, keep us alive, O oh God, that tomorrow we can assemble to worship you, whether by Zoom or in the assembly. Father God, just be with all of us. 
And may we find and make time always to worship you. Guide us now as we tell you thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very much, Brother Grinnell. Um, so just wanted to also mention that we meet for worship, uh, either online or at the church building. The church building is located at 77 Red Hills Road. And we start at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. So if you're a visitor, not a member of the church, we welcome your attendance. We use the same link as well at the same time tomorrow. So our building is located at 77 Red Hills Road. And we also have our services online using the same link. Our Bible classes will start at 11 o'clock in the morning tomorrow after worship service. And we also have our Tuesday Bible classes at 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. And these are all Eastern Standard Times. So that's GMT minus five for those um, of us that are joining from outside of Jamaica. Thank you so much for taking the time. As was mentioned before by Brother Smith, our next session is the third Sunday, Saturday, I'm sorry, in July. That's the 18th of July at the same 6.30. Thank you so much for being a part of our NAV Life series as it relates to parenting. Have a good night.